This is not a surprise to Jesus. He isn't mad at you for having a doubt or a question. Rather, he's proud of you for pursuing an answer. Lee, hey, thank you for being with us today. My uh, pleasure. This Thanks is, for having me. Yeah, it's an honor to be able to sit down and talk with you. And today we're talking about uh, when pastors have crisis of faith or, or doubts in their own faith, which is maybe not a common thing people talk about. Yeah. Uh, but you were a pastor for many years. Yeah. And uh, your story is so prolific. You, you were an investigative journalist. You used those techniques and that skill set to try to disprove Christianity and then we're left with overwhelming evidence that the faith was real. Yeah. Talk a little bit about just your own faith journey. Um, did you ever have a crisis of faith? Well, um, that's a great question. I came to faith, as you said, because of an investigation of the evidence. My background is in journalism and law, so I tend to be a skeptical person. Uh, so I tend to have a lot of questions. I have, tend to have a lot of doubts congenitally, kind of in my nature, and my personality. Um, I spent two years investigating the evidence, becoming convinced that Jesus didn't just claim to be the Son of God, but backed up that claim by returning from the dead. Um, came to faith, and then God changed my life. I ended up leaving my journalism career at a 60% pay cut and becoming a pastor. Um, did I, have I ever had a crisis of faith? Not in the sense that I felt like I was gonna lose my faith, but I've certainly had those moments where a question has come up that's really made me go, huh, wow, I never thought of that before. And so, but, but see, I'm trained in journalism, so I'm trained to research. And so when that kind of thing comes up, my natural reaction is to seek answers. And so I, you know, I, I don't shy away from picking up a phone and calling someone who's written a book on that topic and saying, hey, got a question for you. You know, and most people are more than happy to spend a few minutes on the phone answering a question. So I have found those questions that have bothered me, but none that have really kicked the legs out from under my faith. Yeah. What was one or two of those questions that um, stuck with you the most or that maybe took the longest to wrestle with and find answers to? Well, the number one question that people ask um, and that challenges people's faith is, why does a loving God allow pain and suffering? Yeah. Um, I did a survey through George Barna's organization and asked a cross-section of Americans, if you could ask God any one question and you knew he'd give you an answer right now, what would you ask him? And that was the number one question by a huge margin. Um, and, and that's when we all wrestle with when we get an emotional uh, incident in our life um, where we can intellectually cope with it. Uh, and I could give you a five point sermon on why God allows pain and suffering. Um, but then you run into personal things. Um, you have trouble with your kids or um, a parent dies or um, a, a brother um, renounces his faith or whatever. And all of a sudden the emotional side comes in and it begins to rock your world a bit. Um, and you can deal with the intellectual part of it, but it's more difficult to deal with the, with the emotional side. And I found that, uh, I found it's very important for all pastors to have at least one person outside the church who is a mature follower of Christ, who is a reliable, safe friend that you can talk about these things too. Because I find that most pastors don't wanna to talk to their elders, to their staff members, to their um, fellow congregants at church about the fact they're having questions or even doubts. Um, we all need someone who's a safe person, who we can have an honest conversation with and just say, hey, this is really bothering me. I, I, it's starting to eat away at me. I need, I need some input. I need some advice. I need some encouragement. I need some um, um, restoration. and and. Um, I have that in my life. I have someone named Mark Middleberg, who has uh, been my best friend since 1987. And um, uh, he's a brilliant philosopher as well as just a great guy. And uh, there isn't a day that goes by that we don't talk on the phone. Um, and if I ever have questions about faith, I know I can always call Mark and he'll be confidential and he will help me process the issue. We all need someone like that. You know, it was, it was interesting not long ago, um, there was a story in the news about a, a police officer who was driving down the street and he saw a parked car at the side of the road. And he looked in the car and there was a man sobbing in, behind the steering wheel. And so the police officer stops, he goes up to the car and he, he says, uh, is there something I can help you with? And between sobs, this guy says, 
could you give me a hug? And the cop said, of course, I'll give you a hug. And the guy got out of the car and I saw the body cam of this incident and the cop just gave him a hug and, and they ended up having a great conversation and, and they really encouraged him and so forth. We need, some, where do we go when we need a hug? Yeah. Uh, when we have to be completely honest about who we are and where we're at, we need those kind of friends in our lives. Yeah. You've been a pastor for uh, many years and on three different staffs, church staffs. Yeah. Uh, talk about a time when you encountered a pastor or, or maybe there was more than one, but who was wrestling with something and maybe you were the voice of encouragement to them. Well, what I find is when a pastor uh, begins to develop questions or doubts, uh, they get embarrassed by it often. And um, they somehow, they don't say this, but they somehow think that God's mad at them because they have doubts, because they have questions. God's disappointed in them. They're a pastor after all, they shouldn't have questions. And I always tell the story about John the Baptist. You know, if anybody should have been totally convinced of the identity of Jesus being the son of God, it's John the Baptist. He once baptized Jesus. He heard the heavens open up. He, he heard the voice of the Father saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, right? He pointed to Jesus and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He pointed to Jesus and said, I have seen and I testify, this is the son of God. So if anybody should have been totally sure without question, it was John the Baptist. But then he gets arrested. He gets thrown in prison. Um, this is what happens to us when tough times come. Now the doubts begin to creep in. So now he's not so sure. But what does he do? He gets a couple friends together. He says, go track Jesus down. Just ask him point blank. Are you the one we've been waiting for? We'd wait for somebody else. So they track down Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, John's freaking out. Uh, could you just tell us, are you the one or not? And how does Jesus react? Does he get mad? Does he say, how dare John have the temerity of all people? To raise a question about me? No. He says, go back to John and tell him what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. In other words, go back and tell about the evidence you've seen with your own eyes that convinces you that I am the one I claim to be. So they go back, they tell John, but here's the deal. How, th this has not affected the way that Jesus views John. It's after this incident that Jesus gets up and tells a group, among those, of, those born of women, there's no one greater than John. John, the guy who dared to ask a question. And so that's what I communicate first to a pastor who has a doubt or a question. This is not a surprise to Jesus. He isn't mad at you for having a doubt or a question. Rather, he's proud of you for pursuing an answer. And he will provide to you the kind of evidence and reasoning you need, I believe, to satisfy your heart and soul if you'll open your life to him. And so I think sometimes that ratchets down some of the anxiety that a pastor has when they think they've somehow failed the office of being a pastor because they dared to come up with a, a doubt. Hey, Pastor, thanks for watching this video. The Focus Pastor is here to encourage you, your family, and the church. So if you like this video, Hit the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on social media or check out our website.